scriptures quick to Acts chapter 4. I got something to say. Go to Acts chapter 4. It'll be on the screen. Open it up in your phone, your Bible app. Google it. I was talking to someone today and they were trying to tell their brother you got to get in the word. And they said, do you have a Bible? And the brother was like, no, I don't have a Bible. Okay, well, if you go to a local church nearby, they'll probably give you a free Bible. Oh, that's just too much gas to get over the local church. Oh, well, do you have the internet? Yeah, I got the internet. Good. The Bible's on there. Open it up. You're out of excuses. Now read it. That's what I'm talking about. 
Oh, no, wait, I'm going to delete the internet. No, you probably won't. You know, you, you got to play that pool game that people play with each other when they're friends. Like, hey, they share games. Y'all ever done that where, like, you send somebody games? Somebody sent me a game one time. I sent it back. I said, I don't play phone games. It's like, I know it's really sad because they were like, oh, we're going to, me and Mac are going to play this phone game. And I was like, nah, man, like, let's just talk on the phone or something. Like, come over and we'll run outside or something like real humans do, like with our real bodies, you know. I have a real pool table. We'll just come over and play real pool. How about that? It'd be so much more fun. All right. I don't have a real pool table, but I would buy one to not have to play digital pool. All right. <laughs> that's that right there. If some of you have been to my house, you're like, no, there's no pool table there. I know. I know there's not, but that's how dedicated I am to not playing phone games. All right, Acts chapter 4, are you ready? Before we jump in, I need you to know this, that Acts chapter 1, 2, and 3 are the explosion and start of the early church. Jesus has come down to the earth in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. He's, a, he's been crucified, and he's overcome death and the grave so that we might know life. Our sins might be covered and have a relationship with him. He's gone back up to the heavens, and he's given a call to those who are following him to go and make disciples, that they will be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so they're going out filled with the Holy Spirit. They're preaching the gospel. Incredible things are happening, and they're making disciples, and the church is growing. The problem is that the leaders of the time didn't like it, and so they were causing a lot of opposition to what was happening in the church. And unlike today, the people here in Acts weren't just folding over when opposition would come. They were standing firm to what the Holy Spirit was standing inside of them. So as they were getting pressure to stop preaching the gospel and pressure to stop performing miracles and pressure to stop standing firm in what the Holy Spirit had put in them, they respond in such a way as this, responding to God with their brothers and sisters who are there and also in prayer in Acts chapter 4, verse 29. And they say this, I can imagine them around each other as they're talking to God, but also to each other. They say, and now, Lord, look upon their threats. Anybody been threatened before? And grant your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. I got anybody bold in here? While you stretch out your hand and heal, and signs and wonders are performed through your name, and when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. I went and got some chocolate milk this morning from neighborhood Walmart. Because I was just real hungry, and I got a snack there. It's early before the 11. And I got some chocolate milk. And you know the first thing I did when I got it? I was shaking. Because I didn't want to just open it and drink it. I wanted it to be nice and all thorough in there. There's something about when it's been shaken. And maybe that's why so much has been trying to stop you from praying and keeping you believing that it's boring, that it's fruitless, that it's not powerful, that your prayers don't work. Because, because the enemy knows. He knows that if we began to pray, the family that you're in would be shaken. The city that you're in would be shaken. The school that you're in would be shaken. The nation that you're in would be shaken. And it'd be shaken up, not by our own ability like I shook some chocolate milk. It'd be shaken up by the power of the Holy Spirit. And there they are. And they said, God, give us boldness to preach your word. That, that the hand of the Holy Spirit would stretch out and it would touch people. They would get healed. And signs and wonders would be done by your works, Jesus, not by ours. And they prayed and they prayed. And as they did, it was shaken there. And what does it say? And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And what did they continue to do? They continued to preach and to speak the word with what? Boldness. We're starting a new collection today for the next several weeks. It's called Made for Miracles. Here's what I know. If you're going to start a collection called Made for Miracles and invite the people of God to walk into miracles, then what you're going to have to have is boldness. It's one of the ingredients needed to see God move. What I'm hoping is that I can show you today that you don't have to start by parting the Red Sea or by telling the lame man just to get up and walk. That's not where you have to start when it comes to miracles. There's miracles happening all over, and you can be part of them, and they could be moving you from glory to glory. Anybody ever heard that? From glory to glory as you get to a place where God does say, go ahead, 
take a stick, put it out and part the waters and let people walk across. That would be a great place to be. Go ahead and pray that this room will be shaken up. Go ahead and pray that revival would go out in your school. Go ahead and pray that people would begin to just come in droves after Jesus getting baptized. And get, go ahead and pray that happens and watch it happen. But there's some steps in between. And it seems one of those first ingredients that your faith needs is boldness. A bold faith. Made for miracles, I believe we are. If you don't believe it, it's probably because there's a voice that's been around you somewhere trying to tell you that you're not, that you're not a child of God, that you're not enough, that you won't be enough, that you can't do it, that you couldn't pray for it, that it couldn't happen. All you got to do is just turn around and say, devil, check out my shirt. It's no problem. I'm made for miracles. It says it on the back. Your shirt doesn't say that? That's all right. In a few weeks, if could, if you wanted it to, maybe. But you got to tell the devil what it is. This is what I'm made to do. But how many know you can be made for something and not be doing it? I'm hearing, I've been hearing for months now, there's all these cars that are made to be driven and bought by people and they're sitting in lots because they don't have pieces that go in them. Little tiny pieces. What are they made to do? Be driven. What's not happening? They're sitting there. People are made to be filled with the joy of Jesus, and yet we walk around depressed. I'm not shaming anyone for depression. I'm just talking about the truth of what we were made to be. People are walking around enslaved to sin, but we were made to be free because before we were slaves to sin, but it's because of his love that he has freed us. Go read Galatians, and we are freed to be free indeed. So therefore, we should be walking around free. So if you want to dance, dance. You can be made for it and not be doing it, and I want to help invite you into it because there are miracles happening here all the time. All around you, there's miracles happening, and you can be partaking in it. You could be, re- you could be receiving them. You could be experiencing them. You could be praying for them. This could be part of what's happening in your everyday life because we serve a supernatural God who we're meant to walk in, not just the natural, but in the spirit. And when we walk in the spirit, we don't gratify the flesh. People are getting up last week out of wheelchairs. Limbs are being restored, backs are being healed, shoulders are being healed, COVID's being healed. We had a testimony today about it. You had baptisms the last several weeks. I believe we might just hit our 100th baptism soon. Come on, praise him. Celebrate new life, that's a miracle in itself. We were dead going to hell, now we're going to heaven. There's a total change of direction. This morning I woke up, put the rubber bands in my hair, looked in the mirror and said, look, I got a man bun, miracle, you know. If you have long hair and you try to get that messy bun, you know, it's hard work sometimes. You got to pray for it. Father, give me the strength, mainly in my arms as I reach my hands over my head. There's miracles happening all over. Zach shared a miracle today. He said, I bent down for the first time yesterday and picked something off the ground. You forgot. That was a miracle. You forgot. Someone else shared today that their, that their knee was hurt and it's healed. There's miracles happening. This is what we were made to experience. And it's not because it's great here. And it's not because we're strong enough. And it's not because we're bold enough. And it's not because we've read the word enough. No, no, no. It's because the Holy Spirit wants to move in a supernatural way and change lives. And there's just some people who are open to it and some people who are scared of it. And this is the same thing that was happening here in this time. In Acts. See, the world does not want there to be miracles happening in your life because the world around you cannot make any money off of you if you're healed and miracles are supernaturally happening. What would you pay for? If you found real joy and you didn't need to buy stuff to have joy, how would they make any money? The unsaved culture around you Needs you hurting, needs you broke, needs you sick, needs you, need you constantly poor, needs you in debt, so you have to pay to get into debt and then pay to get out of debt. Explain that to me. If I knew you were being enslaved to me all the time and I gave you fake money and you used it, it's like, that's a great deal for me. That's fake money. Don't use it. It's not yours. Wait until you got it and then use the money you got. You don't need those socks. Just Wait. Phone a friend, call your grandma, wait till Christmas, 
You'll get socks, don't worry, I promise. <laughs> but I want you to be doing what you were made to do. So I want to preach from a title today. Yeah, I'm just now starting the message. That was the prelude, okay, four word. All right, I'll make it worth it, okay, I'll make it up to you. I'm preaching from the title today, Give What You Got. Give What You Got. Anybody want to give what they got? Yeah. All right, great, let me get a basket. No, I'm just kidding. It's not about your money today. I ain't asking for that. I'm asking that you give God your faith and watch what he'll do with it. I promise it will be totally worth it. He will move in your life. Give what you got. I want to turn you again to the same book we were in, Acts, only I want to turn you back one chapter to chapter 3. Again, starting in verse 1. I want to look at verses 1 through about verses 10. Peter and John are there. They're going into the church. They're going to pray in verse 1. And there's a man at the door, so to speak, at the gates, and he's been lame from birth, and he got carried there and laid there so he could beg for money as the Christians are going in. He's begging for money, you know, not a bad place to go and ask for money. So he's sitting there, and he's asking for money. Verse 3, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him. You ever had anybody do that? They just directed their gaze at you. I directed my gaze at someone in the shoe store this week. So strong that they turned and looked at me and they said, do I know you? <laughs> and I said, no, you don't. But I'm just a nice guy. <laughs> they worked there at the shoe store. I needed to buy shoes. And I reached out and I shook their hand and they shook mine and they told me their name and I she said, my name is this, and I said, my name is this. I said, look, now, now we know each other. When I, when I was talking to her, I found out about her faith. She found out about mine. You know, you can learn a lot about someone in a few quick exchanges if you ask the right questions. You've got to ask the right questions. They stared at him. They came in. The guy holds his hand out, asks for some money. Peter and John just, pew, right into his soul. It's important that our gaze is doing the right thing because your gaze can be checking all the things that they're wearing, doing, saying, whatever it is, or it could be going right into their spirit and just sensing the Holy Spirit to speak to me what's happening right here. What's happening in their heart? What's happening past their Made for Miracle shirt? What's happening past those Reeboks? What's in there? What do I need to say? Verse 4, Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and then he said, look at us. Whew. Wasn't enough just to stare at him. He's like, oh, you're staring at me. He's like, look at us. That's intense right there. I'm glad I didn't say that to the lady at the shoe store. No shoes would have been sold. I would have had to find someone else to help me. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. You ever expected to receive something, but you're about to get something you didn't expect? God gives good gifts. You keep asking for good gifts. He's going to give you a better one, I promise. You didn't need him anyways. Him's that guy that he's gone. You don't need him, trust me. God's going to give you a better gift. But Peter said, as he's looking at him, expecting to receive something, Peter said, I have no silver and gold. But what I do have, you know, you have something to give. But what I do have, I give to you. Then now the guy's confused because he wanted silver or gold. He's like, well, copper? Take the bronze? Then he says, in the name of Jesus Christ, how many know you have that name, in, if you're a believer, you have that name and that power inside of you, and you can exercise it, so start. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Well, then he reached out, took him by the hand, he raised him up, and immediately his feet and his ankles were restored and made strong. And leaping up, he stood up, and he began to walk. And he went into the church, into the temple, and he started walking and leaping and praising because he couldn't walk his whole life, but now he can walk because some two random guys gazed at him, took his gaze and said, look at me. I ain't got no money, but I got something I can give you. Take my hand, stand up and walk. And right there it says immediately, feet, 
ankles restored. Immediately, leaping begins to happen. Immediately, he goes in the church. And what does he do? Who does he praise? He praises Jesus. Why? Because they said, in the name of Jesus. Not in my name. Not in your name. In the name of Jesus. He stood up and began leaping and praising God. Verse 9, and all the people saw him walking. Shocker. Did you see Paco? He's been sitting there for years. He just got up and walked. What's the deal? I don't know. Do you hear what the deal is? I heard two guys went over to him and said, hey, walk. And the next thing he knew, he was just walking. That's the conversation that they're having there. The guy's name is Paco. I gave him that name. I thought, you know, he could be a Paco. But then they recognized him. Verse 10, that's the one who used to sit there asking for the money. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what happened. Because that is what you call a miracle. I believe these could be happening more often in a bunch of different ways. If we would give what we got. I want to let you in on the story because at chapter 3, there's a lot of things that had taken place in chapter 1 and 2 preceding that moment. Because most of the time, we don't just walk in to what I would say, amazing miracles like that. Not that other miracles aren't amazing. Not that bending over and picking something up off the ground isn't amazing. Not that breathing life isn't amazing. Not that getting baptized isn't amazing. These are miracles. These are transformation. These are stories. These are incredible. You op- Some of you opened up your eyes this morning and you were able to see something. You know what? And that was not promised to you. But to walk up to a man or to a woman and to say, raise up and walk, doesn't just happen overnight. What was happening in the lives of these followers of Jesus before this moment is so important. Let me show you what was happening. You can go read it in chapters 1 and 2. But I just want to show you. See, before this moment, they were praying. What's your prayer life like? Before this moment, they were seeking God so much so that the city and the place and the house they were in started to shake. Before that moment, there was unity between them and God and between them and people. It's hard to see miracles happen when we love gossip. It's like, I want to see a miracle, but I want to talk bad about people. Now, nobody says that, but we do that. I want to see a miracle, but I don't, I just, I hate them. Unity that's supposed to be in the church, unity among churches, unity among brothers and sisters in Christ that's supposed to be taking place has been interchanged with division and the devil is having his way with our thoughts, with our relationships and so it's causing a block in between what God wants to do. Prayer was taking place, unity was taking place, devotion was taking place. These are very specific words right out of the text. Devotion was happening. They were devoted to God and to his word. They were devoted to what God had said. God had said, stay here in the city until the Spirit comes on you. When the Spirit comes on you, you will know, and then you will go out and you will make disciples. They were devoted to that call. They stayed there, and they stayed there, and they stayed there, and they prayed, and they prayed, and then boom, the Holy Spirit filled them. They said, okay, this is it. This is it. Let's go. 3,000 people got saved. And it's time for us to be done not being able to do simple things that God has called us to do. What's in your heart? Wake up and read the scriptures. Oh, I can't. What's in your heart? Start, stop watching that trash you're putting inside of you. Oh, I can't. What's in your heart? Go this direction. Oh, I can't. It's too hard. What's in your heart? you got to go over and you got to do this. Oh, man, I just can't. There's just a loss of devotion when it comes to our following Jesus that was there in Acts that's missing in so much of the church now, but it's meant to be inside of you. You're meant to be so devoted. You're meant to be so dedicated. This is inside of you. You don't have to find it. You don't have to go scrape it up. You don't have to scrape it off the ground like it's some dirt on the ground. And put it. It's in there. It's waiting to be awakened by the power of the Holy Spirit. You'll be so surprised at how devoted you are to the gospel of Jesus Christ when you let it happen inside of you. Denial, that's a hard one. That had taken place. Peter, the same one who's standing there telling someone to get up in the name of Jesus, had denied him three times. What happens after denial? Renewal. What does Jesus say? Feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. 
Three times denied, three times called. And we're so living in the past so many times about how we can't do this or how we can't do that. It's like, get over it. Get over the past. You, you are a new creation. You know what? And even if you got, even if you got saved and you started sinning, the good news is you're renewed when? Day by day by day by day. So every new day that starts is a fresh start for you. Praise God he gave us that. And then on top of a new day, he gave us a new week. Then on top of a new week, he gave us a new month. Then on top of a new month, he gave us a new year. You want to keep going? See, God has made us to be renewed. So stop letting what was yesterday be what's today. You were made for this. I don't care if you've never done one miracle, prayed one prayer that worked, had one good thought, or have ever read a single scripture. Today is your day. Today is your day to start. Be renewed by it. As soon as this happened in the text, once again the religious leaders come around and they start trying to tear it down. Because just like the unsaved world around you doesn't want you to have miracles in Jesus because they can't make any money. They also don't want it because they can't have any control. The thing is, oh, we thrive when we're under control of the Holy Spirit. Not with our own grips. Not with the world's grips. Not with what someone else said we should be, but who he calls us to be. But well, that's scary for people around us because who knows what will happen. Who knows how inconvenient it might be when you're at the gas station and you're in a hurry, but God says go over there and pay for their gas. I don't know how inconvenient that will be for you. But that's a miracle for them. Tell me it's not. You ever had something at the time of need where you needed it? I watched a little silly video in, my, with my, in one of my 15-minute times with, on Instagram. I think it was at least. It was on some social media. I'm always scrolling, looking for the good stuff out there, you know. And this guy walks in, his like little subtitles, and he gets a haircut. But he's like, all I need is this little piece cut right here, you know, his little hair. And she cuts like the tiniest hair ever. It's kind of the point of the video. And she's like, what? Like you can tell she's like, that's all you need. He's like, yeah, that's all I need. And she's like, oh, well, I don't have to charge you for that. Like that took me zero time. Okay, thanks so much. He's like, oh, I can tip you though, right? Yeah, you can tip me. Great. So he pulls out 100, hands her 100. She's like, what? Then he pulls out another 100, hands her another 100. She's like, stop it right now. Pulls out another hundred. Hands her, he's handing her 300 bones right there. Boom, boom, boom. Then he pulls out another one. $400. Boom. For like, can you imagine this lady? She's going she's gonna to go home and say, a miracle happened to me today. This doesn't just happen. You do no work. Someone gives you $500. That's incredible. You could be that for somebody. Oh, but there's so much pressure around, you know, like. I'm still trying to figure me out, and I don't really know where I'm at. Here's the deal. Everyone's trying to figure themselves out. Nobody knows where they're at. Nobody's there yet. Nobody's arrived. The greatest that ever lived besides Jesus is riding to the ends of his life, and he's like, I still, I still have not finished it. I still have not attained it. I still have not get there. But one thing I know, I'll keep going after the upward call, the high prize, Jesus Christ. My reward's in heaven. That's what I know. And I know... There's nothing that hurts more than to be made for something and not be doing it. But we go so long that way. We get so used to how it is. We get so used to feeling broken. Get so used to this like feeling like they were just there's something more, there's something that's missing. So we start grabbing all these things and filling it in to what could be missing, what could be missing. And what's missing is the work and the goodness of Jesus Christ. That's what's missing. It's supposed to be coming out of you in every way. It's supposed to be flowing through you. And every person that touches you is supposed to be encountering it. And they're experiencing miracle after miracle, going from glory to glory. Because what God is doing in your life, it's so rich and so full. So don't feel bad if you're not there yet. But don't let the fact that you don't feel like inside of you, you can say to someone, get up and walk. Don't feel like inside of you, you can't say to someone who walks around that has a crippled hand, let your hand be straightened out and fixed. Don't feel like just because you're not there right now, there's not miracles you can't be doing in between. Don't let that stop you from this. Don't let that stop you from prayer. Don't let that stop you from devotion. Don't let that stop you from unity with people. Don't let that stop you from seeking after God. Don't let that stop you from giving someone $5 because that's what you got. What do you got that you can do? 
What do you got that's inside of you? Just today during our prayer time, someone testified and they said, I've been leading worship for a long time, but now I'm leading worship and I know that this is God using me. And as I continue to lead worship, God continues to grow what I'm doing. As I continue to pour out my worship, God continues to expand my ability. That's everything. I don't care what's your gift and what's your calling. You fix cars, you work on things, you got smarts, you got dumbs. I don't care what it is. God wants to use it. I heard there was a guy the other day who has millions of views on some YouTube or some channel because he cooks dirty food in a dirty kitchen with dirty pots and pans. And people love to watch it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But guess what? He's doing something with it. He said, what do I have? I have a dirty kitchen. I got some dirty pans. I got some dirty food. Let's make this baby happen. All of us would have sat around and said, oh, man, before we do this, we got to call the contractor. we got to get a whole new kitchen. Well, I just can't afford that. Well, I don't even know. I've never even cooked anything. This guy said, I don't care. Who's got a dirty pan? Here we go. Let's go. Oh, i got an iPhone. Just set it right here. Boom, now we're rolling. All of us walking around with professional cameras in our pockets wondering, what can we do? What can we do? Be the light. I don't care what it is. Be the light. Whatever you got. Give what you got and watch God begin to stretch your capacity, your ability, your skills, your strength. Watch him begin to move through you and your miracles. Here's what I know. I'm not there. I'm still moving towards it. I'm still going more and more. We had Mallory here just a few weeks ago praying she would get up out of the wheelchair. And we, for three weeks we were praying. And I thought, man, three weeks, that's just too long. My faith's got to be stronger than that. My life's got to be stronger. i got to be walking more in the spirit where I don't care where anyone else's faith is at. When I say get up, it's like they don't have a choice. My faith has commanded the word of God, and it will take its work, and it will move. Oh, but we're pulled back and forth between the things that are easy and the things that are godly. Well, guess what? Here's what I know. What took me three weeks before will soon take me three days. Not because of me, because I'm letting God in control of my life. What takes me three days right now will soon take me three minutes. Because the manifestation of God's work through me will be stronger and it will be faster. Because the less of me there is and the more of him there is, the faster it will happen. And what takes three minutes now will soon take three seconds. And what takes three seconds won't even need any miracle at all because it will already have happened. Oh, you're crazy, Pastor Mac. You're right. I am crazy. What do you think they thought about these guys in the text? Miracles are done. We just read a story, learn a history lesson. No, no, no. We're not learning history lessons. We're looking into our future, what could be happening. Saying, God, stretch us, but I don't have enough faith. But God, stretch me, but I don't think I'm good enough. But God, stretch me, but I don't think I can. But God, show me what I got, but I don't got nothing. But just show me something small. Just what do I have? What do, oh, this little wrapper, I could use it. What could I do, God? Show me what I could do with it. This may be so insignificant to you. Like this is nothing to somebody. Yes, but in my hands. All of a sudden with this little rapper, I make a little song. I'll do anything with anything. I didn't even plan this little rapper. I just had it in my pocket. I'm chilling. I know God will work through me. He'll turn, he'll turn a little piece of trash into amusement for you. And you're laughing and you're being filled with the Holy Spirit because joy is good and laughter is good for the bones. What do you got? How's your prayer life? What can you be doing this week in your prayer life that will prepare you for the moment you're about to walk into? What could you be doing this week in your relationships, in your unity, that could be preparing you for, for being made for miracles? What could you be doing in your devotion when God puts a calling and something inside of your heart? What could you be doing to, to go after it? I don't care if it happens or it doesn't happen. That's not the point. The point is that your faith was willing. God won't get to heaven and say, show me your track record. How many times did you prophesy and how many times was it right? <laughs> I realized the other day. I realized the other day. Billy, what, what is one of the best baseball players right now what's what's one of their batting averages second best what's his batting average (laughs) 
302, 327. That means if he goes up to bat 10 times, seven times about, he does not get a good hit. Three times. 3.07 times he gets a good hit. He's the best. We're okay with that. We celebrate it. And if someone gets in that league and they're batting 400, they're crushing everybody. But when you get in church, all of a sudden, when God wants to use you, you no longer can be satisfied with .4. Now you have to be 10 out of 10 all the time. What? So now if I'm willing to do a miracle or to be used by God or to give a prophetic word or to do something great, now I have to be 10 out of 10? Nobody's 10 out of 10. If I was 10 out of 10, I'd be Jesus. You'd be worshiping me. You'd be Jesus. I'd be worshiping you. Neither one of us are. So why are we getting so locked into if it doesn't work one time, now that's every time? Here's the thing. The best baseball player, three out of ten. If three out of ten times you pray for someone this week and they get healed, you had a great week. Because right now some of you are 0 for 10. Why? You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. It can be on a magnet. It can be in your locker. I don't care where it is. It's true. So get it out of your head because it's a lie from the devil. Because everybody starts off 0 for 10. And some of us make it to 1 for 10. And some of us make it to 2 for 10. And some of us, 3 for 10. And some of us are going around and we don't even know, you know what, and we just kind of stumble on a miracle. Next thing we know, we're praying and boom, it happens. We're like, I don't even know how it happened. Good, because it wasn't you. Let it be him. I don't know how it happened either. All I know is I took my, my faith and I put it with what he's got and all of a sudden, I had something to give. Thank you guys for joining us right here online. And here's what I know. I know that God is moving through this time. He's moving through whatever platform you're choosing to worship through right here and right now. Whether you're in your car, whether you're at home or wherever you are, I know that God is moving through this time. Hey, it's back to school time. I know the kids are gearing up and getting ready to go back to school. I just want to take a moment to just say we are blessing your family. I, I'm praying for blessings over, over your kids over this next semester, over this next year, as they're going into something that may be totally new, something that they may have never experienced before. I, I am just praying over every single child and every single family. Hey, to all of our parents out there, I want you to know that God sees you. And we see you here at Authentic, and we champion you. We're on your side. We love you guys so very much. For everyone who has been giving, thank you so much for giving. For those of you guys who would like to start giving, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can give through Venmo or go online to Authentic.Church and give under the Give tab. Hey, we love you guys, and we'll see you soon.